It is a good day to be a photographer because Adobe has listened to their customers and they have added in a brand new generative remove tool into Adobe Lightroom, Lightroom Mobile, and Lightroom Classic. With the generative remove tool, you can easily remove distractions and unwanted objects from your images with the power of AI and Adobe Firefly. This is the same AI engine that you would see being used inside of Adobe Photoshop and their generative fill tool. In the past, you used to have to be very precise with your selections if you were doing the spot healing brush, if you were doing the remove tool, or if you were doing clone stamping. But the generative remove tool allows you to be a lot less precise and a little bit more free to make your selections and even over select a bit. It will still remove objects in a much more efficient way than if you were just painting it all in with one of the previous tools. To access the generative remove tool, go over to your control panel and find the eraser. This is now the new remove section. And there you will still see tools like heal and clone stamping, but you will now notice that the remove tool has a generative AI option. Go ahead and click generative AI. And now you are able to start painting out whatever sort of distractions or objects that you wanna remove from your images. You wanna make sure to select the entire object that you wanna remove and any shadows that might be cast by that object. Like any sort of selection you would make with a brush, you can adjust the brush size and you can also add or subtract from your selection. Once you've made your selection, hit apply and watch the magic of AI remove whatever your objects are that you selected from your image and prepare yourself to be in awe of the results. Every time you use the generative remove tool, you will be presented with three variations of new image wherever your selections were made in your photo, which is great because you can find the variation that works best in your image. If those first three variations don't work for you, then you can always hit refresh and Lightroom will go ahead and generate three more variations for you that will hopefully work better. You will also notice a button called Object Aware, and this takes your broader selection and makes it more specific and refined to the object that you're trying to remove to help preserve the background details in your image. I find that this does a pretty good job of selecting the objects that I'm trying to remove from the image, but when it selects too much or too little of that object, you can go in and you can refine your selection. From there, you can either add or subtract from your selection easily with a brush and you can adjust the sizing of it so that way you're making sure that you are selecting exactly the object that you want to remove. One important thing to note is that the refinement tool is is not currently available on Lightroom Mobile. Now that we talked about the tool and how to use it, I wanna give you a few best practices on how to get the best results out of this new tool and hopefully answer a few questions that you might be having about it. In order to get the best results out of Generative Remove, you wanna make sure that you use it before you do any cropping on your image. If you crop in on your image and then you're trying to do a new sample with the Generative Remove, from the edge of the crop that it's going to be trying to borrow from the edge of the actual rest of your image and you're just probably not gonna get the best results. You also wanna make sure to do a generative remove before any sort of masking or lens blur selections to prevent ghosting in your image. In order to use the generative remove tool, it requires an internet connection. If you're on mobile or if you're on Wi-Fi, that's totally fine, but if you happen to find yourself outside of of internet connection, then you will not be able to use generative remove. Because the generative remove tool is a generative product from Adobe, that means that you are using up your monthly generative credits. If you're unfamiliar with the whole credit system, basically Adobe gives you a set amount that you're able to use per month, depending on the plan that you have. And if you ever happen to get to zero, you would need to buy more credits in order to use the generative tools beyond that. Now, when I asked Adobe how much credits per generated for move is being used, they basically said that it's so few that you wouldn't really notice it. But in my testing, it was like anywhere from a range of like one to four per generative remove. Another question is, does the generative remove tool replace the heal clone and the regular remove tool? The answer is no. You can still use those tools for any of the functions that you would have used them for previously. They're really good for easily removing small detail items like blemishes on skin or lens dust. And the smaller objects are less likely to need the full 
generative AI power of the generative remove tool. Well, hey, if you got some value out of this video, why don't you go ahead and add some value right back to it by hitting that like button and let me know in the comments down below. Are you excited about this tool? How are you gonna use this tool? Maybe you've already had some experience with it. Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, you can check out all the links to the gear that I use to make these videos, as well as my very own Lightroom presets. And if you are more interested in Lightroom in general, I do have an entire playlist dedicated to Lightroom that'll help anybody go from a beginner to a pro in photo editing with this amazing program. Check it out and I guarantee you'll get some value out of it. But hey, until the next time, my name is Zach Sopak and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.